Hello, hello. So I think we are live. And there we go. So welcome to today's coaching with Alex. Alex is not here yet, but I thought I would jump on anyway, because I have a few things I want to say. So the first thing I wanted to say is that my coaching with Alex is going to end in a few weeks if he's coming back at all. <laughs> Otherwise, it's ending now. Um, and I'm looking for a new victim. If you would be interested in being coached live on my YouTube channel, send me an email and I will send all the details over to you for you to consider whether that is something that you want to do or not. Um, if you want to be coached on YouTube, you have to be okay with coming on on a specific time and day every day for three months. I'm going to shorten it to three months. There is never a problem moving it, but I would like to keep the consistency as much as possible. We don't have to do it at this time and this day. I'm flexible with regards to the time and the day, but it has to be consistent throughout those three months. So that's all I wanted to say on that. So my email, maybe you want my email in case you want to email me. Let's see, I have it there. So that is pim at pimjohnson.com. And you can just send an email there and say that you're interested in that. I haven't really announced it yet. Um, I will do very soon, but I will consider anyone who feels like they are addicted to carbs in some way and want help with that. So that was that. And then I have a second announcement, which is that you might have seen that in Facebook group. You might have seen my short video on it. I'm having a new training coming up next week or depending on where in the world you are. I'm starting on Monday here in New Zealand, which will be Sunday in the US. And what we're going to do during those five days is that we are going to establish new habits. <clears throat> so... This could be a food habit, but it can also be something else. And the reason that I'm losing my voice, <clears throat> excuse me, the reason that I've chosen to change habits is because people in my Facebook group said that that's what they want training on. I think I had a range of different topics, suggestions for what we could do. And all of them were related to food, except for the habits, which is sort of related to food, but not in the title. And that's what uh, got a majority of the votes. So that's what we're going to do. So if you want to change a habit, a bad habit that you have with regards to when you're eating, if you're always eating when you come home from work or whatever that might be, you can just join that training. We're going to go live or I'm going to go live every day for five days. And I'm going to teach you all that you need to know to be successful at changing a habit. So that will be quite fun. And uh, let's see if we have any comments here. We have a uh, lots of hellos. Hi, Bev. Hi, Patricia, and yes, and Shelley, and there are three anonymous ones here. So Alex is in the studio, which is good timing because I have no more announcements to make. So we shall pop him on. <laughs> Patricia is doing her, her her thing. Why couldn't the pro her proctologist get auto ins insurance? I should pop Alex on so he can answer. Why not? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Do you know Alex? No. Um, why couldn't the proctologist get into insurance? insurance. Um, get oh auto insurance. Yes. Oh. Uh, Something to do with in mm, full cover damages. Oh, uh, is it something <laughs> I don't know. to do with because they, <laughs> is it so because they they keep on getting hit up the rear or something? <laughs> Probably. My best guess. Patricia, let us know. Oh, because they keep on getting rear-ended. Is that it? Yeah, I like that. Let's see what she says. Because when he drove cars, he always wrecked them. I like your answers too. They would be very applicable. 
All right. What about Pimini Cricket? What's uh, what's your joke for this week? Or have you already Ooh. told it? No, I haven't told it. I had one. Um, yeah, so me and my partner were watching three movies last night back to back. I was the lucky one. I was facing the TV. Very good. Shit house, wasn't it? <laughs> so, um, no, I like that one. Um, I can see myself plagiarizing that one for sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> good. Right. So, what's yours? So, I turned to my dog the other day and I asked him very simply, what is two plus two? And amazingly, my dog turned to me and said nothing. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that was shit house. I quite like that one. Yeah, so does Shell. But maybe she said that about mine. I don't know. <laughs> They're all shit house, <laughs> to be fair. Okay, so shall we get into the coaching? I'm trying to find where we were. We have so I have so many notes here. Right. I can't quite remember. What were, what was your homework last time we spoke? Um, was that just to feel the urges of everything? Was that what we decided? It sounds, okay. that sounds about right. Right. <laughs> you don't even remember. Have you done it? Yeah. Yeah. That's, okay. I mean, that's pretty much, that's pretty much all I've been doing. And uh, yeah, just. Tell been... me about it. Yeah, well, um, I still walk the path to greatness with my diet, although I couldn't couldn't say goodbye to the milk just yet. The um, the urges for gambling and uh, and pornography were pretty strong, and I've been I've been mostly dealing with those. But, um, yeah, I've made that my priority. So I haven't gambled and I haven't watched pornography for, uh, for over a fortnight. Um, so, yeah, mostly I've just been um, dealing with those urges. So, um, pornography, that's... Breathing is, has been very, very good for for that. Um, just breathing, um, closing my eyes, and just waiting for um, waiting for the craving to pass. Um, that's probably probably the easiest. In fact, that's that's a lot. I'd say that's a lot easier than um, than waiting for a sugar craving to pass. Actually, um, interesting. Yeah, um, gambling. Gambling is uh, is more environment based and um, context specific. Yeah. Uh, one of the places um, I would go to um, to play like gambling games like machines like it's like an electronic fruit machine is uh, Ladbrokes that's a prominent um, gambling company here in the UK and it's almost as if the universe has been taunting me um, I'm not I'm not joking when I say that the last four markets I have done in four separate locations in England my stand in the town center or city center has been right opposite a Ladbrokes. Like I have had Ladbrokes in my um, 
what's the word in my direct not my peripheral vision my direct vision mm -hmm. <sighs> um sort of taunting me so um it's kind of been a bit of a joke uh, every okay. time i arrive to work Wait, it's there so just it's listen to what you just said i find this is so typical alex it has been there taunting me <laughs> It's like, Alex, are you coming here? We have fruit machines. A little bit, yeah. No, no, you bit. can't. <laughs> That's not what's happening. Um, no, no, I did no, I really didn't mean that. I, I really didn't mean that when I go there, the sight of it um tantalizes me. The sight of it just that seeing look, seeing the sight of it um excites me. And it puts the idea in my head to go and turn a hundred pounds into four hundred. And it's when you see it, it always um, triggers uh, a, a positive thought. Um, and then I have to remind myself that um, though sometimes I can turn a hundred pounds into four. Sometimes I can turn a thousand pounds into none, and and I try to I try to remember the pain of that because it is very painful, um, and it's very humiliating to to lose money in such a frivolous um, and tacky way, irresponsible way. So um, yeah, I, every time I see a betting shop, I just um, I remember my promise to myself. Um, I would say the difference between the gambling urge um, and the and the urge to watch porn or eat food is um, it's a little bit less physical. It's a bit it's less in my chest. It's quite it's it's sort of up in my head, and I find um, that my strategy has been. To just um, and perhaps perhaps you think this is wrong, but uh, I've just been um, focusing on uh, focusing on a sensation inside where I remember how painful it was the last time I lost a lot of money. Um, so I I see Ladbrokes, and then I and then I turn away from it, and I just pause, and I just focus on that thought. And I, and I remember my promise to myself, um, my promise to my girlfriend um, that I'm not going to do it anymore. So that's that's how I've been dealing with those urges. But pornography is more; it's been more uh, breathing. But yeah, it's been two weeks, and um, I don't really miss either of them. No, we usually Gambling don't do when we stop. <laughs> we just have urges. So, yeah. We usually don't when we stop. We don't miss it, but we still have the urges. Well, I miss um, gambling's a little bit harder. Gambling's a little bit harder because um, any gambler will tell you it's it's a unique addiction. Uh, it has a unique set of of thoughts that are born out of it, and uh, very very common thought is. Um, Yes, the last time I gambled, it was painful. I lost a lot. And yes, after a loss is the best time to quit. But there's another voice that says, oh, you know, perhaps I could just gamble one, one more time to try and um, win back some of those losses. And I don't, I, I don't know what it is about the universe. I don't know what it is about um, the life of the gambler. But any gambler will tell you, and, and it might it might sound superstitious, but or most gamblers will tell you that when you win is kind of when you least expect it. A little bit like the analogy of finding love. When you um, when you when you go into a betting shop with with a sort of focused, desperate um, need to recoup losses. Um, that that is when you suffer an even more catastrophic loss. 
But when you go into a batting shop in a in a kind of a good mood with a sense of abundance, um, like if you had if you if you had five grand and you walked into a betting shop and you just spent five hundred of it for fun with a sense of and, and it was very carefree, and because you had five grand, losing ten percent of it seemed inconsequential. Um, invariably that those are the days where you turn like, you know, 500 pounds into four grand or something. And it's because you're not, um, you're not in that state of desperation and need. But if, um, if you have that good day, you have that high and then you go back in again um, and then you lose all your money and then you, and then you try to go back and, and win it back you never ever win when you're in that state you always lose more so i've been okay. wrestling a lot with those thoughts uh, those are the thoughts i have when i see a job so you said a few things here one of the things you said was do you remind yourself of the pain and you thought maybe i don't agree with that i do agree with that i think that is a great strategy to use i think you should use it together with a strategy that will give you a positive emotion as well. It's the 50-50. Like, how, how do we find that balance? Because you are very drawn to the pain and suffering. So for you, it's going to probably maybe work better to have something painful and focus on that to avoid it. But you also want something that will stimulate the release of dopamine can you still hear me? <laughs> Hello? Yeah, so I'm just, just plugging in my phone. I'm just charging my phone, sorry. So you also want to have something that stimulates the dopamine, something that feels good. So when you are not gambling, what could make you feel good in that moment? The easiest way of doing that is to connect that to a positive emotion because that would release an amount of dopamine. Not the same amount as gambling, but it's kind of like at least a small substitute that will help you rebuild this new neural pathway, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. so, so in this your... situation, you have like, okay, it's very painful to do that because all these reasons. But what could be a positive thing that is also happening at the same time? Well, it feels quite positive to um, to know that all of the money that I earn henceforth grows and it doesn't diminish um, in this incredibly profligate and wasteful manner. So it feels good to know that I can start saving money again. Okay. And it feels good. Um, it feels good when I tell myself that it feels good when I tell myself that even though I've lost a lot, that just letting go of that um, is is buying me a freedom inside that is actually worth a lot more than than that money. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, sacrifice. I wouldn't trade winning all of that money back again in exchange for getting caught back in the dopamine. Um, trap because that's the thing if i did win all the money back i lost in the last couple of months uh it would chemically alter my brain and i can sit here now and maybe say delusionally that i could win again and then walk away but the truth is that is that it would feel so good to win all that money back it would give me a false and and reckless confidence to go back and, and bet again and win more. Um, because simply the act of winning all of that money back would be perceived by my brain as, as sort of such a, such a miracle, such a, um, a fortunate omen that I would then suffer from the gambler's delusion of, you know, I'm the chosen one. I can, I can continue winning. I can go back and win. So um, <clears throat> maybe, but, you know how to battle or battle, how to sit with the urges. So maybe yeah. you could actually win the money and then stop. 
I could, I could, but um, but no, I, don't I don't want, want to. to do that. <laughs> it's no, too much I don't work. Want no, it's not. No, it's not work. It's it's um, no, it's it's just stupidity. Uh, the money which I've earned over the last two weeks since I stopped, I could lose all of it in twenty minutes trying to win that money back, and it would be, and that would be a great humiliation. I would have to. I would have to face myself after promising myself I, that I was through with it. And I'd have to look at my girlfriend and tell her after I swore to her, I would never do it again. Um, and it would, it would a, a, a betrayal of that magnitude would probably cost me my relationship. So, um, How is or it, it would say, to swear to her to not do it and swear to yourself to not do it? Well, I don't. I don't really think it was. I, I. She didn't. She didn't tell me to swear to her. I didn't. I didn't have to. I wasn't under duress. I think. I think really, the better way to say it was that I. I swore to myself, and she was a witness to that. So she would. She would see that as a betrayal of myself rather than a betrayal of her. But. Um, but when you. But you betrayed yourself before. Yes, I have. I have, but uh, so what's the difference now? Well, the difference is that um, there's something quite. I know. Well, that they, they, you know, they are, they are uniquely different addictions. I know that the dopamine release is what is what um, they have in common, but the the consequences are uniquely different. Like uh, blowing two thousand pounds of hard-earned money in half an hour there's something quite egregious and really quite sickly about that like you know i could i could blow 20 or 30 pounds on on a pile of food and it's the wrong food and it's and it makes that little incremental contribution to my health deteriorating yeah but, but what i'm saying do... is that you have told yourself before that you're going to stop gambling and then you have uh -huh. Not. No, no, I don't think so. Not in the, um, not with the same, not with the same gravity as now. I've never. Okay, so it's the gravity that is different. Absolutely, it is the the gravity. The gravity before one makes a promise to oneself is is uh, is what makes all the difference. Um, all of the other times on which I told myself I wasn't going to buy another scratch card or place another bet, um, that all of those, um, all of those expressions of intention occurred when I was in denial about having a problem. This has been the first time I've, um, promised to stop doing it, uh, with, um, in, in a, in a state of acceptance that, over the last couple of years, I have begun to develop a gambling problem. Now, the neural pathways are nowhere near as developed or ingrained as with food, so it will be easier to walk away from uh, from gambling than it is to walk away from porn and food because porn and food, or porn and sugar, have, have been two decade long addictions. Even so, if you break up with your girlfriend. Um. Yeah, even even then, because uh, yeah, it's just um, the house always wins. The house. <laughs> the shit house always wins. <laughs> the house wins. Okay, excellent. So I should bet my money on the house. Yeah, absolutely. Because, like, like, like. Like I think I said in the last stream, you know, my Italian friend said to me the first time I won big, he was like very concerned for me. And I said, Francesco, what's the problem? I'm, I won. I didn't lose any money. I won. And then he, he was, he was very young actually. He was much younger than me, but he had, um, he had discovered some great wisdom on the subject. But no, he, he turned to me at the tender age of 21 and he said, Alex, it's not when uh, you lose. The problem is when you win. 
And I had no idea what he meant until I went through another two years and, and it started to turn into an addiction. And then I realized that the most dangerous thing you can do is win because every win sets up a loss that's, that's normally about four times as, um, as grave. So if you win 500 pounds, that will give you a confidence or it will give you a desire to chase dopamine again that will then push you to lose, say, two grand, right? So, and that's exactly what happened to me. I won about 500 pounds, I got cocky, and then I blew about two grand. And, uh, and then I realized that um, Francesco was giving me sage advice because he, he had developed a very, very short problem with gambling. I think he wasted about 700 euros on horses and then he woke up and uh, he, he took all of the betting slips and he, he made like a, almost like a piece of art. He got a bulletin board and he put, he put every single betting slip where he lost on, onto this bulletin board. And then a little piece of paper at the end that just said, like, well done, Francesco. Uh, a sort of sarcastic reminder to himself that he made this idiotic error and he was never to make it again. So he had this bulletin board on his wall with all, um, so that he could be reminded of, of all the money he lost whenever he thought about gambling again. And, uh, and, and when he was telling me that, um, I just thought that he was being... Uh, dramatic and um and <laughs> it comes from um, you. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love it <laughs> sorry for laughing no, that's uh, fine. if you think someone's dramatic they must really be dramatic <laughs> no i just couldn't see it. i couldn't see it I couldn't you know i needed to go through yeah. my own pain but it took a lot more than 700 euros for me to wake up but i've woken up now and now no, that's fine I, yeah no, you needed to walk down that path. You've done it. And hopefully this gravity is enough to kind of convince you that this is really not what I want to be doing. It's not what I want to be doing and it's, and it's not the type of person I want to be either. What are you going to do with the money you're saving? Well, that's a good question, actually. I... um. Recently, I've been thinking uh, quite um, in, in quite a revolutionary. Uh, I've been thinking rad. I've been thinking about making a radical change to the way I live, and I've been questioning seriously whether or not I want to live in a house or an apartment. And I've been thinking about maybe. Uh, I don't know. It's it's. I'm not. It could be. It could be just a, a silly half baked notion. But part of me is uh, quite attracted to the idea of living in um, a motorhome and uh, working remotely and um, having the freedom to just drive all over the country. There are. It's probably a. It's probably a heavily romanticized. Um, lifestyle but the more documentaries i watch about people who walked away from financial ruin declared bankruptcy and then just lived in a um you know like a trailer or a, a motorhome and just drove from place to place especially in, in places like america there's that there's that famous film with that um that famous actress it's based on that book written by that German. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, sorry, but it's it's no. it's the actress from um, Fargo. You know, she's she plays the police. So I can't remember. I always forget her name, but she's a okay. tremendous actress. But yeah, I've been thinking recently about um, saving up to buy one of those motorhomes and just yeah, just driving up and down the UK, going to you know basically seeing the United Kingdom, um, exploring the natural beauty and and learning about the history and, and culture of the country uh, while making money on um, 
whilst you know whilst traveling and there are people who do it there's uh there's a guy who runs a business on on the web and he has like a special um but how do you feel when you think about actually maybe doing this i'm quite excited you know i mean i'm already doing a job where i have to drive everywhere and uh so i've I've had a little taste of being on the road and going like a hundred miles in various directions from Bristol, and I was driving to a lovely town in Devon the other day called Tinmouth, and I had to drive through these beautiful forests in Devon, and I just I don't know I just i mean i I think i d- I don't know what to do with this realization yet perhaps. Perhaps a motorhome isn't going to be the final conclusion, but I know that I'm very clear on what the starting realization is. I don't know what the solution is, but I know what the problem is. The problem is I am too old now and too sensitive uh, to live in a city any longer. I live opposite the most confrontational, polluted busy roundabout in the whole city and especially in the summer when I have my windows open I have to listen to the sound of thousands of cars passing by and and tens of confrontations on the roundabout and it's it's um it's it's actually it's it's I know that it's deleterious to my health I know that I'm breathing in toxic air and that it's causing my nose to be inflamed whenever I go into the country and my breathing gets easier when i come home my breathing gets really heavy um i know the noise pollution is is causing me to be in a fight or flight state i know it, that when certainly when my windows open and i'm asleep and i start hearing the beeping and the and the sounds of articulated lorries um uh the roaring past okay. so, so the but, problem is you don't you don't do well where you live And you want to get away from that. Yeah, I want I want And a very to exciting move. solution is to get an R V. Yeah, I want yeah, I want to move country. yeah, exactly. I want to move away from the city and into the country, but not I don't want to buy a home in the country. Hmm. I do quite like the idea of being mobile because um even if I buy a home in the country, there could be a lot of problems. Like when you buy a home, you know, you're starry eyed. And then begins the long journey of becoming acquainted with every problem, every drawback, uh, every annoying, um, inconsiderate neighbor. I mean, I could move into the country and then discover that there's okay, some. Stop, 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 stop. stop I want to bring stop. you back to this excitement. Because oh, you okay. said, I feel excited when I think about that. How? Because a few weeks ago, you told me, like, I don't really know how to feel any positive emotions. Excitement is usually quite positive, in my opinion. So, how does that actually feel like? I think it would be more accurate to say that um, I have a I have a tremendous weakness at connecting with my body especially on command in moments like this when 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 people ask me to draw my attention to my body and how i feel um the link between the feeling and and my ability the link between my feeling and my verbalizing it um is not is not that great it doesn't mean where that in the moment it? where is it Well, I don't know. Exactly. I don't know. You don't even because, know where it is. Well, that would well that would require remembering the last time I was excited. And well, we just talked I, about it. Imagine you're getting your RV, you're working remotely, you're traveling up and down the country, you're seeing new. Well, it's places, in it's in my it's, about the history. Well, it's it's my head, isn't it? It's it's my forehead. Okay. It's it's a lot of excitement takes place in the brain and the forehead at the front of the forehead, like you know. Um, and what does it feel like? Is it like buzzing? Yeah, bubbling? yeah, tingling. Yeah, it's a sort yeah. of tingling and buzzing, and um, it's a sort of a tingling, buzzing restlessness. Yeah, 
and it's quite pleasurable. If you say so. Is it not? Why, why else would you like to feel excited? I never said I want to feel excited. You don't want to feel excited. Okay, interesting. I didn't say I didn't want to. <laughs> Do you want to feel excited? I don't know. I'll have to think about it. I don't <laughs> think Bart, you know, I think Bart would get the wrong end of the stick if he walked through the door right now. Um, <laughs> Kim, I can't find my shoes. Would you like to be excited? You know, <laughs> that was a terrible um, New Zealand accent. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, that was not New Zealand. Would I like them? Fashion chaps. Right. Would you like to feel excited <laughs> about? <laughs> You're putting on your deep, RV. sexy voice now. Um, Very. Would I like to be excited about an RV? Yeah. Yeah, especially if I'm uh, manufacturing methamphetamine in it. Um, yeah, especially then. That would be that would be exciting. That would be a good way to make money on the go. Yeah. So now you know, like excitement feels. You feel it up in your head and it's a little bit bussy tingly. Cool. So the next time you're at the market, you're placed in front of the gambling place. You can go one step deeper. It's not like, okay, here's all of the shit that is happening and that's very painful. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that because then I might lose my girlfriend or whatever. And then you go to the place when I'm not doing that. I'm saving money and I'm saving it for this reason. And there you have your dopamine hit. You're like, yeah, I'm going to get an RV. I'm going to do all sorts of crazy shit. That's pretty good. Are you with me? Hello. Did we get a del delay between me and you now? I'd say the carnivore life works really well with an RV. Mm. Yeah, I'm with you. Can you hear me? Oh, you're on a 30-second delay all of a sudden. Hello? Yes, I hear you, but I just think that there is a delay now. Not sure what happened there. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello? Don't let this happen now. Hello, hello. When I do this, oh dear. where is it? Do it, you as get your thumb up. Okay, we have a very long delay. Hello. Hello. I think he's going to drop out. His picture is frozen on my screen anyway. Hopefully that will help his connection. <clears throat> right, so we have time to read some comments, I guess. Oh no, Alex is back, I think. Hello. Hello, hello. Can you hear me right now? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear yeah. me? Awesome. Okay, the delay is gone. I like that. I better. know. <laughs> that was just weird. Okay. So, oh no, now he's gone. Don't you just love internet? Like, it's so unreliable. We spend so much of our lives <laughs> doing shit on the internet and then when it fucks up you're like what am i gonna do now but here we are so it's just me for a bit i'm sure he will come back and meanwhile i shall read your comments if you have any questions like or you want me to expand on anything that we've been talking about just let me know uh, i can do that as well alex needs an art i started with lego <laughs> sets awesome um i think I don't know if I'm allowed to share it, but I think he is doing something that is really good for him. Like writing a book, which suits him so well. 
<laughs> Just because I've whispered, I almost didn't say it. Um, what is diamond painting? I have no idea what that is. Hi. Shall we try again then? Let's try again. Yeah, awesome. So did you hear all that I said about, you know, the, having the uh, the deterrent when you at the market in front of the betting place and then just look, go, go to that place where you are already in your RV doing fun shit, learning about history, working remotely, whatever you want to do in there. like Because then you get that excitement and you get the dopamine hit kind of counteract the the loss of it yes yes indeed um yes i, I have noticed i uh, i recognize the power of thinking about everything which i shall gain through discipline and through you know the hard work of of recovery and uh, and establishing new habits i i recognize more and more um how much more powerful and uh effective it is to um to invest in the positive rather than to be deterred by the negative or and, and to wrestle with with negative feelings more i i, I do yeah. recognize i mean that. that has a place because it will help you not do it in the moment but the wanting something else is what will keep you doing it. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I, re regaining my physical health has been a, a really important, positive uh, thought I've had over the last month. Uh, when choosing to eat meat rather than carbs or plants. Yeah. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait to lie down in bed for the first time in four years and not have acid reflux. I really cannot wait. Um, for Are you going to do victory dance then? I uh, can't dance. <laughs> a victory but jump? I'll no, I'll make a victory speech, sort of Nuremberg style. Yeah. Of course. Why did I even ask? <laughs> I love it. So I'm just, um, since we're talking about positive thinking, etc. what has gone right this week? Like, What are the things that have been in your favor, if you like, or been going the way that you wanted them to go? It just feels really good. Well, I've had some good, very good days at work where I've made good money for the company, um, and uh, that's that's reinforced um, my positive feelings for the job, and then that in turn gives me a um, stronger sense of uh, of identity professionally because. Uh, it's been a tough year this year um, with the financial state of the country and people are not spending as much money. So I've, um, I've been struggling, but things always pick up after July and between August and December, that's, that's typically when people start loosening their purse strings. So work has been going well. My numbers are up. Um, I'm in a relationship, um, which, Quite frankly, though, it's not perfect. It is the best that I have ever had. And my my metric for gauging it to be the best or the worst or better or worse is, um, I suppose, my own virtue, my, my display of virtue. Uh, my current girlfriend brings out the best in me. I'm more patient and I resolve conflict much quicker and much more maturely now. So my relationship going well has really helped to reinforce the, the extremely important idea that change is possible because I am changing, I have changed and I'm a better boyfriend than, than I've been with previous partners. So that's 
that's really reassuring. Um, taking better better care of my uh, taking better care of my flat. What happened there? Sorry. I just want to make sure that my phone is not on some bullshit power saving mode. Nope. Okay, I don't know why. I don't know why that happened. So sorry. I apologize. Uh, yeah, um, I'm taking better care of my, you know, my flat. I'm more orderly. I, you know, I'm starting to get into the habit of uh, of cleaning regularly, doing my laundry regularly. You know, uh, doing the dishes regularly. So I'm starting to demonstrate that self care and self love a little bit more, more and more by taking, you know, by cleaning my bloody room. And um, yeah. So, oh, and, and just, and, and also, uh, I, I've been working on something really important, which is I've been working on listening more to people when they speak, not interrupting, letting people finish their streams of consciousness and that's really improved my interaction with people and uh i've made made a couple of new friends in the last month or so um as a result <laughs> so things things are good um i still still got depression meaning i still get random or perhaps not random but i get sporadic attacks of pure negativity and that's what i mean by depression i get um i'll get like sudden attacks where you know just everything's negative nothing is worth doing uh, my girlfriend doesn't love me you know just like I don't know how to describe it. It's just, it's like a kind of, it's like a kind of mental cancer, which is trying to convince me <laughs> just to just give up and die. Here with the drama. No, it is, it is. It's like, it's like, oh, no, it is. No, no. I mean, fucking hell. I mean, <laughs> what could, what could be, I mean, what, what is more dramatic than. A mental than being, cancer. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I mean, any addict, any addict in recovery will tell you it's like a little voice that's trying to kill you. And but it's, what if it's completely normal to have these mental thought swings, if you like? Oh, it's not. It's not normal. It's it's what it's it's it'll get better, and it is getting better. But it's it's um as I'm recovering from addiction, I, I'm obviously going through some swings and roundabouts with my hormones. Yeah, but the and magnitude my... might be higher right now. But you're still going to yes, I... have them. Yes, indeed. I know. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, like, um, maybe it's because of the gambling and the porn. I don't know. But, like, yeah. I get I get these peaks and troughs. And the troughs, yeah, are, of course. the troughs are pretty bad. You're, like, removing all the dopamine-inducing activities that you're doing all at once. Of course, your brain is going to be like, "What the fuck is the point of all of this?" Like, I just feel like shit. <laughs> and then you just have to rein it in. It's like, yeah, okay, brain, calm down. It will get better. It's, it's hard. It's hard sometimes. Sometimes it's pretty, it's pretty sinister. But I, I attribute that to the fact that, um, that my capacity to invent negative narratives is, is a finely tuned weapon of devastation. I can be devastating with my words in judgment of myself or the world or others. And when, yeah, when that, when it's auto devastation. Um, yeah, but you practice it for so many times. Like, that's what you're really good at. Your brain is like, I don't want to do anything that takes a lot of energy and effort. I'm just going to go to my <laughs> auto devastation. Because that's the easy option here. Yeah, 
Yes, it is. It is easier to be negative. Well, well, no, it's not easy to be negative. It's easier to do the thing which has a well carved out and worn in um, neural pathway. Yeah. And for some people, that is being asinine, sanctimonious, and disgustingly sanguine and upbeat in their outlook. Uh, and I hope that, though I hope to be rid of my auto destruction, that sounds like something from Transformers, but though I hope to be free of my masochism and my uh, flagellation, I don't, I don't ever want to be a happy, clappy type. Um, Do you think I'm a happy, clappy type? No, I think you are a obstinate, taciturn, miserable, <laughs> scandy, noir drama on Channel 4 where someone has been murdered uh, and they have the uh, I don't surname... Think that's what you think. <laughs> they have the surname Johansson. Son. And that's not even my surname. <laughs> Jansson. <laughs> yeah. There's been another like... murder. I mean, let me tell you. I think I had a, a whole day last week when I was not able to get myself into positive mind state. Because there was so much going on last week for me. There were a lot of things happening. They were out of my control. There were... I had so many things to do, self-imposed and otherwise. A lot of people to talk to. And it was just like, this is not fun. Things are not going my way. This is pretty shit house. Why am I doing all of this? And I could not bring myself back to just feeling better about it. It's like, I, I, but I know that that's always going to happen. Maybe not a full day all the time, but sometimes that happens. And it's just like, okay, I know it's probably going to be better tomorrow. I'm still going to have shit loads to do. But I'm probably going to feel better about it. And I did. I wouldn't say that I was like, oh my God, I love doing this. It was more of a determinate nation that I could find within myself like hey, I'm going to do this I'm like, I know I'm going to have to do it so I'm just going like, to get my head down, start working just do it, get rid of the distractions <laughs> if anyone comes and pesters me I'm like okay I'm busy, fuck off I'm just going to have to do this <laughs> well I, I sympathise I mean unfortunately in well, the end light. the rely well no it's it's not uh, it's not necessarily a universal experience. Uh, what you go through, You're, the kind, the kind of life which you have engineered, is reliant upon the um, reliability of of people. And if if more than fifty percent of the people upon whom you rely, uh, you know, to be disciplined and and punctual and and to honour their arrangements. Uh, if they if they fail you, then um, the whole edifice uh, begins to um, to collapse or to destabilize. And you know, so you've your job yeah, what, my has job invested is to find in the most. No, I know, oh, yeah. I know indeed. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying that the everyday operations of your profession are almost entirely reliant upon the most unreliable entity on planet earth which is people so it's it's just guaranteed to be tumultuous and mercurial you know you as my epigeneticist friend says so frequently the most disappointing thing in the world is a person yeah sure <laughs> whether it's yourself or someone else but <laughs> if i could manage my mind better I might have handled that better. But there is like, even my brain has a limit. It's like, if one thing happens, I'm like, okay, cool. I'll move on. No drama. And then it's well, two, three, four, five, and it's like, nothing goes right. Then it just explodes. Right. To, although to use one of your words from before, you know, perhaps you, perhaps you need a deterrent um, in, the, in the form of... Uh, 
threatening your your clients or your uh, <laughs> colleagues with corporal that. with corporal punishment. Um, no. I'll tell you what, like, people. My I know it's are circumstances in, in my life, and I just have to deal with it. I know this is going to sound like retrograde um, nonsense, but yeah, you know, people are punctual to their appointments. Um, if they're under the <laughs> constant threat of being horse whipped in the street. So you were late today. Are you saying that I should horse whip you? Uh, you already have, haven't you? <laughs> Some more then, because you still were late. Well, look, I mean, I wasn't that late. <laughs> I had an internet <laughs> connection. <laughs> yeah, but well, you know that. So you could have prepared better. Look, I'll leave it to your conscience. <laughs> Infinite is your capacity for forgiveness, holy, holy Father. Oh, it's um, not like I don't forgive you. Just before you go, can you tell me uh, what was the um, what was the inspiration for for pink hair? Is it pink? It's supposed to be purple, but I thought it was a darker purple. That is way too light for my taste. Yeah, purple. I have different connotations for purple and pink. Purple is... Okay, let's not talk about my hair. We only have well, why a few not? minutes left. Because okay. I want to know what you're going to work on this week. I'm going to give you the reins today. What do you think that you need to work on? Grass or preferably concrete. Um, sorry. Um, on what do I need to work? Well, punctuality. <laughs> um. Yeah, sorry. Go on. <laughs> I have been having a hard time with depression, that is true. And that still doesn't mean that I don't have a choice as to the degree of, of how much I believe the thoughts in my head. I do get carried away sometimes. And then it translates into dysfunctional behavior, unhealthy behavior. So I, I could certainly use... I could certainly use some strategies for for dealing with uh, depressive thoughts. And, uh, you know, I've talked about my, my Amber Heard virus, you know, the ab abandonment issues. Um, she has, you know, she has that abandonment complex. So she, she destroys relationships before they have, you know, she pushes people, she pushed Johnny Depp away so that Johnny Depp couldn't push her away. Um, she and I are kindred spirits in that regard. So I, yeah, I, in a broad sense, I have a kind of, um, my depression turns me into a kind of self-destruct machine. And... It makes me, it, it, it sort of turns me into a petulant child who upon learning from his mother that his grand sun castle will be destroyed by the tide in four or five hours, um, decides to stomp on it himself to, to, you know, to, so that he doesn't have to watch, um, some other force destroy it and for it to be out of his control. That, that's, you know, I destroy all things that are good in my life, or that is what I have done thus far, so that I can be in control of the outcome. And there's something going on there. And it's, yeah. and my depression exacerbates it by many factors of, 
you know, 10. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm sick of it. It is, so it is you, the most you destructive like force focus in my life. on the thoughts that are coming up? Or would you rather focus on the behavior that you see? Because I think adding both at the same time might be a bit much. Yeah, the behavior, you know, like, um, and I'm, I am working on it. I just, it just still needs a lot of improvement. Um, but I don't know, I, perhaps not the behavior. Perhaps it's, it's just the moment when I have these thoughts and feelings. They just feel so real and they're, and they feel more real than anything else. Um, you know that, I'm sure you know, or Bart must know, you know that song Hurt by Nine Inch Nails? Okay, let's Surely skip you know Nine Inch song. Nails. I, just oh, go I wasn't going to talk about Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> I was going to say, there's that line in the song where he says, I focus on the pain, the only thing that's real. And mm. after a while, that is what that's what becomes of an addict's emotional world uh the painful is it it has it, it seems to be the only thing that's convincing and the tremendous danger of that is that a, a person who is working through depression and trying to overcome it has the monolithic task of trying to disbelieve in the most compelling and seemingly deceptively so believable reality. My depressive reality is a thousand times more seemingly believable than the new young uh, positive seeds which I'm trying to plant in my mind, in my okay, belief so Can you this week, just like when you are in this state, that you call depression where you are getting carried away with all of these negative uh, thoughts that you're having. Can you either write them down or make sure that you remember them in some way? And what happens after that? Like what, what is the result of you having all of those thoughts and getting carried away with? Just start kind of being aware of what's going on and like really see the whole picture, the whole chain of reactions that is coming from that. I can certainly do that. In fact, um, I, sh I well, I have embarked upon some self-authoring recently on my laptop, so I've been, I've been keeping a diary. Um, so I can Sweet. certainly, huh? Sweet. I'm really glad. Yeah, I can. It certainly... helps so much to do that, but there's always resistance to doing it. Yeah. Uh, so your purple, yeah, purple hair, I associate with like sexually frustrated hippies from Wookie Hole in Cheddar, sort of the Glastonbury types, you know, they, they smell like incense and, uh, and they, you know, they think that crystals can cure IBS. And then pink hair. That's what I'm going for. That's what you're going for. Yeah. And then pink can hair. Can you smell me? Yes, I can. Well, yeah, I can. Good. Yeah. You look like you smell like incense. <laughs> Um, and, uh, <laughs> and then the pink hair is obviously, um, because of recent uh, identity, the recent phenomenon of, uh, out of control identity politics, pink hair is now the you source one of, thing. you can't really what see I miss? it, but there is like an undercut, so it's kind of shaved. So I'm also lesbian now. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, you're sort of like lesbian, woke, sexually mm. frustrated hippie. Yeah. All of that. Yeah. I'm glad it's, yeah. <laughs> Good. Right. I've got to go. So, um, you know what to work on. I shall see you on time next week. Maybe even early. You did a, a round of being early for like several weeks in a row. Maybe we should try that again. <laughs> How many cricket? I was on time. I couldn't connect. I you were not on time on my screen. <laughs> okay. Well, if your you screen, if you, you're if, not being late at the meeting and say, "Well, there was traffic. I was on time, but there was traffic." Still went on time. To he who makes his screen his god, indeed, I was not on time. <laughs> but if you make reason your god, you okay. <laughs> Love you, Pim.
Love you too. Love you guys. Thanks for being here watching. We didn't have any questions, so that's fine. I will see you again next week or whatever, maybe before, but Alex will be here next week. <laughs> see ya. Thank you for listening to me, everyone. Appreciate it. Take care. Bye.